killing off a beloved or iconic character can result in an unforgettable movie moment that fans will talk about for years or maybe even decades. The emotional impact of a meaningful death scene speaks for itself, though sometimes apparently one death just isn't really enough. These 10 movie characters kick the bucket on screen again and again and again for our apparent entertainment. And so with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 movie characters they couldn't stop killing off. Number 10. Doctor Strange in the MCU Though a good number of the Avengers have died at least once courtesy of Thanos' fateful finger snap, Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Strange holds the distinction of having died way, way more than any other MCU superhero. In his debut solo movie, Strange unforgettably uses the Eye of Agamotto to trap interdimensional supervillain Dormammu in a time loop, prompting the incensed entity to repeatedly kill Strange in an attempt to escape. A hilarious montage shows Strange being killed around a dozen times, incinerated, stabbed, crushed and so on. But it's implied that the loop went on far, far longer than this before Dormammu gave up and agreed to spare Earth. Doctor Strange co-writer John Spates has stated that Strange died dozens of times, if not hundreds of times, so there it is. But that's not all. Strange was also one of the victims of the blip, which turned him to dust for five years and then most recently in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the Defender Strange variant is killed by a demon and outrageously resurrected as a zombie later on. Plus, don't forget about Strange Supreme, the version from Earth 838, who gets disintegrated by Black Bolt and of course the villainous Sinister Strange, who the Prime Strange impales during their climactic fight. Even a conservative estimate puts Strange's MCU deaths at close to 30. But considering how many times Strange must have had to die to exasperate Dormammu enough to leave Earth alone, he's surely died at least several hundred times right? Number 9. Agent Smith in The Matrix Agent Smith is of course the Matrix series of recurring overarching antagonist, for the most part anyway. Much like Doctor Strange, Smith has technically died many, many times over the course of the original trilogy. Smith is defeated and obliterated by Neo at the end of the first film before returning in The Matrix Reloaded with the ability to copy himself onto anybody connected to The Matrix, with all of these copies bound by a single consciousness. In The Matrix Revolutions then, we see Smith die basically in numerous times. For starters, a Smith-possessed Bane gets beaten to death by Neo, and then at film's end, Smith is returned to the source by Neo, destroying both Smith Prime and all of his copies. Given the implication that Smith more or less assimilated everybody connected to the Matrix, and we know there are billions of people in it, it's safe to say that Smith effectively died billions of times at the end of Revolutions. What a trip. Thankfully, everybody Smith assimilated returned to their prior form, though when Smith himself resurfaced in the recent Matrix Resurrections, he surprisingly managed to survive this time round. Number 8. Brenda Meeks in Scary Movie Brenda Meeks is unquestionably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, characters in the Scary Movie franchise, and a recurring gag through the series saw her get killed off in one movie, only to inexplicably reappear in the next one. A commentary on the horror genre itself, surely. Brenda's most memorable demise comes in the original film, where she's murdered by a group of pissed off cinema patrons trying to watch Shakespeare in Love in peace. Brenda's constant talking and generally obnoxious behaviour sees her get stabbed and beaten eaten by the collective movie-going audience before collapsing in front of the movie screen a la Scream 2's opening sequence. She then returns for Scary Movie 2, where she actually survives only to die again in Scary Movie 3 when she's attacked by Tabitha, a parody of Sadako from the Ring franchise. To make her death seem even more definitive, Brenda's corpse is accidentally exploded at her funeral. And yet, Brenda comes back again for Scary Movie 4, and though she doesn't actually die in the film itself, Herself, she is killed off in a hilarious deleted scene. Just as Brenda expresses relief at surviving, she's crushed by a giant shipping container that randomly falls out of the sky because why not? Regina Hall opted not to return for Scary Movie 5, nor did co-star Anna Faris sensibly, and so that's all she wrote for the character. Number 7. Optimus Prime in Transformers Despite being the most iconic Transformers character, Optimus Prime hasn't been spared his fair share of death over the years. Well, whatever dying means for a sentient robot life form, anyway. 
Though Optimus has died literally dozens of times in both the Transformers comics and cartoons, he's also kicked the bucket cinematically thrice over the last 35 years. Optimus infamously died in 1986's animated film Transformers the Movie, expiring from wounds sustained in his battle with Megatron, and traumatised an entire generation of kids and prompted Hasbro to hastily resurrect him in the TV series. In the second live-action movie, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, at the end of the awesome forest fight, Optimus is impaled and killed by Megatron, though is later resurrected by Sam Witwicky. And finally, in the 2013 animated film Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Predacons Rising, Optimus gives up his own life to rejuvenate the Well of All Sparks, allowing life to be restored to Cybertron. As ever though, it wasn't permanent and Optimus was resurrected a few years later. Number 6. Thomas and Martha Wayne in Batman and DC Bruce Wayne's parents, Thomas and Martha, are the all-time recurring punching bags as tragic superhero origin stories go, edging out Spider-Man's Uncle Ben. Despite everybody and their grandma knowing how Batman came to be, we've seen the Waynes murdered in near-countless Batman and Batman-adjacent DC movies over the last three-plus decades. In Tim Burton's 1989 Batman, we see them gunned down by a young Jack Napier, aka the Joker. And though Batman Forever is technically a sequel to the Burton movies, it's really more of a soft reboot, where we again see Bruce Wayne's parents shot dead by a shadowy gunman. They're then shown dying in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, this time by Joe Chill during a botched robbery. They also die in the opening titles of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, and again in the climax of Joker, where they're shot by a rioter. Furthermore, the iconic scene has been recreated in the animated films Batman Gotham Knight, Batman Year One, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, Batman vs Robin, and Batman Bad Blood. And let's not forget the single light-hearted depiction of the Wayne's deaths in Teen Titans Go to the Movies, where the Teen Titans quite literally wrap a necklace around Martha Wayne's neck and shove the pair into the fateful alleyway, in turn ensuring Batman's creation. While the the recent The Batman was intimately centred around the Wayne's death, their murders mercifully weren't shown this time. Because let's be honest, we're all pretty sick of seeing Crime Alley by now, right? Number 5. Ellen Ripley in Alien Ellen Ripley is the much-loved protagonist of the Alien franchise, and who controversially died at the end of the wildly divisive Alien 3, diving into a vat of molten lead just as the xenomorph queen she was impregnated with burst from her stomach. As sad as it was to see Ripley go, it was a fittingly heroic end for the character. That is, if not for the fact that sequel Alien Resurrection went the glorified fan fiction route and brought her back by way of clones, ever a hallmark of quality storytelling. A clone of Ripley is created using blood taken before her death, but because Ripley's DNA combined with the xenomorphs while she was pregnant, and xenomorphs have genetic memories of their hosts, it allowed the new Ripley to retain some of the original Ripley's memories. How convenient. Anyway, the Ripley clone is referred to as Ripley 8, because seven failed clones were created before her, yet either died or were euthanized due to their extensive mutations. Memorably, we get an up-close glimpse of the horribly deformed Ripley 7, who Ripley Ripley 8 quickly puts out of her misery with a flamethrower burst. Ripley 8 ultimately survives the events of the movie, but with nobody having a clear idea of how to continue her journey, we haven't seen any version of the character in the 25 years since. Number 4. The Camp Nightwing Killer in Fear Street Fear Street's Camp Nightwing Killer, aka Tommy Slater, is very clearly an homage to Friday the 13th's Jason Voorhees, a camp counsellor who gets possessed by Satan and goes on a killing spree at Camp Nightwing. But Tommy himself dies numerous times across the trilogy, in the 1994 set first film being trapped in a Shadyside high school bathroom and exploded, before reanimating to continue his rampage. In Part 2, 1978, Tommy is stabbed to death by Cindy, but again resurrected before Cindy again offs him by brutally decapitating him with a shovel. But that's not it either. In part 3, 1666, Nightwing resurfaces once more, dying in another trap set by the heroes, only to be revived again and finally die for good when Sheriff Good is killed, causing him and the other Shadyside killers to disintegrate. Number 3. Nikki in Little Nikki 
Now, admittedly, in the case of the Adam Sandler comedy Little Nicky, his deaths all occur in the span of a single film. But considering that Little Nicky is neither a superhero film nor a time loop movie, it is fairly unique in this regard. The rub is that Nicky is the son of Satan and sent to Earth to prevent his evil brothers from taking over the planet. Nicky, having spent his entire life in hell, struggles to adjust to life on Earth, resulting in him dying a number of amusing times over the course of the film. Yet the stakes are ultimately pretty low in Nikki's case as he simply respawns in hell or, in the event of a sacrificial death, heaven. His deaths include being hit by a train twice, run over by a bus, creamed by a truck, mauled by a polar bear, drowned by one of his friends, and having his skull crushed by a large rock. In some of these cases, Nikki voluntarily lays down his life either to save another or to quickly get back to hell, while in others it's the result of sheer clumsiness. Either way, the guy dies a lot over the course of little Nikki's mere 90 minute run time. Number 2. Professor Charles Xavier in X-Men and the MCU Patrick Stewart's performance as Professor Charles Xavier in the X-Men movies is one of the greatest in the history of superhero cinema, and so it's surprising that filmmakers have opted to kill him off so damn often. Xavier's first on-screen death came in X-Men The Last Stand, where he was disintegrated by the Phoenix-powered Jean Grey, only further frustrating fans already colossally disappointed by basically everything the movie had to offer. It's implied that Xavier came back from the dead by transferring his consciousness into the mind of his comatose twin brother, but in X-Men Days of Future Past, he expires once again, being annihilated by a sentinel in the film's climax. Mercifully though, the plot's timey-wimey shenanigans allow Xavier's death to be undone and for him to return in Logan, where he's suffering from the world's worst case of dementia, which causes telepathic seizures that have killed hundreds. Just as Xavier seems to find some peace though, he's stabbed to death in his bed by X-24, a clone of Logan, but at least lives long enough to learn that it wasn't Logan himself who administered the fatal blow. And finally, Xavier of course had a brief cameo appearance in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, showing up as the leader of the Illuminati on the 838 version of Earth. Xavier telepathically enters Wanda's mind in an attempt to free her imprisoned 838 variant, only for Wanda to snap Xavier's neck, killing him in the real world. Considering that will almost certainly be the last time Patrick Stewart plays the part, it's unlikely we'll see Xavier die on screen again anytime soon. Number 1. Tree in Happy Death Day Though we've generally refrained from including time loop movies on this list because it's just too easy, Happy Death Day is a little bit different because unlike most time loop films, it isn't a one-off. The first film saw protagonist Tree die like a dozen different ways, including being stabbed numerous times, drowned, hit by a truck, brained with a baseball bat, blown up, hanged by herself, and finally eating a poisoned cupcake. And the sequel, Happy Death Day to You, brought Tree back for more punishment, falling or jumping off buildings three three times, electrocuting herself in the bathtub, drinking bleach, diving into a wood chipper, being blown up, and driving into a power transformer. Granted, in the sequel, Tree is most often killing herself in order to quickly pass information forward to the next time loop, but still, how many horror movie final girls have died even once and yet lived to tell the tale? And that concludes our list. If you can think of any that we missed, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.